Welcome back to Cooking with Mark and Oreo. Today we're going to teach you how to make pastel. A lot of you guys might be thinking to yourself, what is pastel? Well, many of you guys uh, know me personally, but a lot of my viewers don't know me. I am of Cape Verdean descent. And what Cape Verde is, it's a group of nine islands off the coast of Africa. Uh, they used to be owned by Portugal, but then became its own country back in the 70s. Pastel is, uh, I guess you could call it an appetizer, but it's a beloved uh, recipe for my family. Uh, it's my mom's recipe, but it's loved throughout the culture, Cape Verdean culture. Uh, so we're going to learn how to make that today. It's similar to an empanada, but our filling's base is tuna. Um, you want to use like the big cans of tuna, which I didn't have any big cans. Uh, so I used three small cans, but you want to use a solid white chunk tuna. Uh, one large can, or I use three small cans. And then you're gonna add about, I use a lot of garlic because I like my things to have a lot of garlic. So I'd probably say, that's probably about six cloves of garlic min minced. And then probably a, a half an onion, diced. I did the onions off camera so you guys wouldn't see me crying. Cause that's not fun. Onions always bother my eyes. Uh, you wanna put some salt. Uh, just a good amount, you can eye it. And then some black pepper. And then, I don't know why, but Cape Verdeans use the Saison on everything, everything that they cook. So I'm gonna use a whole package of Saison. It does have a nice flavor too, but Cape Verdeans use that on everything. Then you wanna put some hot sauce. I have the end of a bottle here, but I bought a brand new bottle. Uh, you want a good amount of hot sauce. You want to have good flavor. Uh, what I had left in that bottle is not enough. You want to do probably eight or ten dashes. Uh, you can always add more later. You want to do one egg. And the last thing you want to do is chop up some fresh parsley. Uh, you want to put a lot of parsley because you want that really strong fl uh, flavor. So I just want to cut the parsley uh, as small as you can. I'm not the best chopper. So you might want to utilize like a food processor or have a friend help you make it <laughs> that can cut. Um, so I'm just going to add the parsley to the mix. And I'm going to use a wooden spoon or wooden spatula um, and mix all those ingredients together. Okay, after well mixed, you want to bring it over to the stove. I have about three tablespoons of olive oil over medium heat, um, already heated up. And then you want to add your tuna mix to it. And you're going to saute this in a pan until the mix is, is dry. So you're going to want to keep it in the pan. You don't want to keep the, the heat up too high. So medium, uh, medium to medium low. And you want to mix it so it doesn't stick to the bottom, but you want the, the mix to be dry when it's done. Uh, you can already smell the amazing flavor of the parsley and the, um, the onions and garlic. Uh, so this is going to cook for a while because you want to wait until it's dry, but you want to constantly keep stirring it. And every time I make this, I thank my mother for this recipe because this is amazing. We're back over here with the tuna mix. I've been mixing it constantly throughout the process. You want to uh, keep it in the pan, uh, sauteing with the olive oil until the mixture dries up. 
as you can see, it's pretty dry now, so we can move it from the heat. Uh, I would say it was on the heat probably about 10 to 15 minutes. You can shut the burner off because you want this to cool before we make our pastels. All right, so you want to set that aside to cool because you really don't want to play with it when it's hot. So we'll see you in about, I'd say let it cool for at least 10 to 15 minutes. See you soon. Tune is nice and cooled, so now we can put together the pastel. Um, a lot of my non Cape Verdean friends call it empanadas, but they're not. <laughs> uh, this is, again, like I said, traditional to the Cape Verdean culture. Uh, we're gonna use Goya discs. Um, this is an easy way of doing it, unless you're a really advanced chef and you can make your own dough. Uh, these Goya discs can be found in your local grocery store. Uh, each comes with about 10 discs. So you're gonna cut them in half, so you can get about 20 per package. And that one package of uh, container tuna, which is three small cans and one large can, will be about two packages of the discs. So we're gonna put them all together first before we start frying them. So you're gonna take one. And I'm gonna show you the trick way. Um, you can use a rolling pin. I'm gonna use my hands. And you just wanna give it a, uh, a little bit of a stretch. You don't want it too thin, because then they'll break apart. Then you wanna take a spoon. And you wanna put about a spoonful of mix. You can get a little more in there. And make a mess. And then you're gonna close it all around the edges with your fingers. You want to make sure it's nice and tight. Then you want to take a fork and you want to close it all around the edges because you want to make sure these don't open when you're frying them. And then you want to poke a couple of holes on the top. And that's one. You got a, quite a bit to make. Again, then you're going to take the other half of the one that you started with give it a little bit of a stretch. See, so you have a little hole there, you don't want holes. But you can just fix that really quickly. And again, you wanna give a nice spoonful of the mix. As you can see, the all the garlic and the parsley and the onions. Again, press the edges with your fingers until it's closed. And then you're gonna secure close it with a fork. And I recommend making all of them first before you start frying, because uh, then it, you end up catching up to yourself. I tend to do it that way. And I'm just putting them on a lined uh, cookie sheet with um, wax paper, just so they don't stick. up over here you can hear the oil in the backgrounds ready to go so I'm just been continuing as you can see over here having hot at work it is definitely a long process but it's definitely worth it uh, I remember growing up uh, whenever my mother used to make these me and my cousin Chrissy used to fight over who's gonna eat the most uh, this was our favorite <laughs> so all right so we're gonna go over to the pan as you can see, we have oil frying. Normally when I make these, I use my deep fryer, but not everybody has a deep fryer. So you can do it in the pan. Uh, you wanna put, I think I put a little too much oil, but you wanna put about two inches worth of oil. You wanna use canola oil for frying. Um, and you want it medium to low heat. And then you also wanna have a plate lined with paper towel so when they're done, it can absorb the grease. Tongs to put them in the frying pan so I don't burn myself. And you don't want to overcrowd the pan, so you can do about maybe four or five at a time. I 
So I'm just going to put them in my hand. The thongs are uh, better for when you take them out. There we go. Yeah, and I, I always have a hard time saying the name of these. I don't know why. <laughs> and now you're going to deep fry those until they're nice golden brown. Um, you can flip them um, as they go through as they're cooking, but you want to let it go golden brown. All right, so now, as you can see, they're starting to turn golden brown, so you want to flip them so they um, brown evenly on both sides. Uh, I, you want them a little darker than they look right now, but it's a good time to flip it, and then you can flip it again one more time. So I let that fry a couple more, more minutes um, until they're perfect, and uh, you'll see it in a few minutes when I take them out of the pan. As you can see, the first batch is a nice golden brown. You want to shake off the excess oil before you remove them from the pan. Look how beautiful those look. And again, shake off the excess oil. The, the paper towel is going to soak up some of the oil too, because you don't want them too greasy. And then you're just going to keep continue frying them in batches until you have uh, all of them fried. So I'm going to continue doing that again, probably like five or six at a time. You don't want to overcrowd your pan. We'll let those cool right there. And these are finished ones that we have over here already. And I am gonna have to try one and let you know how amazing they came out. Mm, yum, my favorite food by far. Thank you for checking out this video on learning how to make Cape Verdean pastel. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button. Me and Oreo would appreciate it. And if you really liked the video and you try making it or have some comments, leave a comment and like, like the video. Thank you, see you next time. Say bye Oreo.